greetings, welcome, and thank you for stopping by Galadon Gaming for... Oh my gosh, it's huge! It's 7.0! Elixir. Cost. Average. It's actually something that I get asked about in every live stream I've ever done. People are like, come on man, put together all of the most expensive units and get out there and see what you can do. And there's no better time than League Reset to give it a try. 7.0 is the average if you carry only the most expensive Elixir cards in the game. And there are several ways to do it, so we're going to see more than one 7.0 deck today. And yes, I am facing a player that's three levels below me, and I can pretty much just ignore the push down the right-hand side, just really focused on grabbing the three crowns. But the minion horde, okay, that suddenly I realized maybe this deck wasn't as great as I thought. I don't really have a card that's going to take out any air units other than the three musketeers. At nine elixir, every other unit is not going to attack airborne units, so I knew I was in big trouble if he was able to, like, fireball, zap my three musketeers or anything like that. Luckily, they did do a good job of staying up, wiping out everything in their path, just absolutely annihilating, and there you can see that level 10 player with his fireball not doing a great job. I sneak in the dirty royal giant in front, and now it's a royal giant and a couple of musketeers that are just going to have their way with this guy's poor towers and I have to admit three levels is a huge difference almost insurmountable now I have put out episodes before of some highly skilled level 9 level 10 players taking out 12s and 13s it does happen but it's just so hard to stop such big units like this despite the fact that I had to wait so long between deployments the barbarian hut back there barbs working out as a good card to kind of slow down the minion horde otherwise they would have gotten right to the tower and now it's just a matter of putting in a final blow to get into that King's Tower. I'm going to ignore the Hog Rider down the right-hand side and just again focus on moving in down the left and trying to finish off the Three Crown win. And this time I'm going to squeeze in the Bowler. Gotta love that Bowler. I still would love to learn how to use this card. I feel like he's tough to get right. But if you can use him, there are opportunities where you can really get a huge advantage dropping a bowler in with other units in combination. Here the bowler gets to the tower and single-handedly gets the three crown win and it is GG. Again, not fair, but you guys got to remember it's the beginning of the season and I have to get back up towards 4,000 trophies one way or another, at least until the Royale team decides to change things up. Now... While I was doing that, I did come up with probably the most amazing deck strategy of all time. Now, yes, I am going to go ahead and copyright this. If you guys use it, you have to give me credit because I have invented, yes, the Lava Sparky Bow deck. So, Lava Sparky Bow, it is unstoppable. You drop in a Lava Hound first, then you drop in a Sparky. It's going to help work out on defense while the Lava Hound moves forward. Now, once the Sparky is cleared out attacking units, it will turn and move downfield. But this is when you take the opportunity to drop that Expo in support of your Lava Hound and your Sparky. The Sparky is going to help distract other units, take a few more out, and eventually the Expo goes to work on the tower. And there you have it. Lava Sparky Bow in action. Pretty much unstoppable. So I'm just giving you guys a heads up, a little warning, if at the end of the next season you see Galadon up there at the very top and it looks like I'm using Trifecta or some sort of minor mini P.E.K.K.A deck, no, I'm definitely using Lava Sparky Bow and then switching the deck out so that when I go offline, people don't realize that I'm annihilating player after player after player with Lava Sparky Bow. So this is my secret deck, so please don't tell anybody how OP Lava Sparky Bow is. You can see when it's used correctly, there's really no need to worry about anything. In fact, the other players usually get so intimidated and so scared that they pretty much give up and there's no chance. Now, this player has dropped a Sparky of his own and that did kind of surprise me. But you also have to remember that this is actually a variation of the Lava Sparky Bow deck. This is the Lava Sparky Bow Go Row deck. That's right, Lava Sparky Bow Go Row with the Golem with the Rocket. The Rocket ready to take out opposing Sparkies like you saw right there. The Golem moving in after the Crown Tower and a P.E.K.K.A on the other side. So actually, I think this is the Lava Sparky Bow Go Row attack. Yes, Lava... Lo one more time, you guys. 
Copyright Galadon 2016. Lava, lava, hold on. Lava Sparky Go Bo, Lava Sparky Go Bo Ro, Lava Sparky Bo Go Rope Attack. That's it. Laga, la, Lava Sparky Go, I give up. Anyway, let me know. That was it. Three crowns, I win. Okay, let's move on and check out some actual competitive play here. This is White from Full Attack using the 7.0 deck, and he's playing a player that is nearly his level. So he's level 10 facing a level 9, and I have to say I was surprised to see some of my clan members give it a try and actually make it work, or at least reasonably. So we'll check out White right here. Now obviously I do feel like out of this 7.0 Elixir deck, or Lava Sparky Gobo Rope, it is important to get the Barbarian Hut down early because those Barbarians are going to do a lot for both offense and defense, and it's the only smaller troop you have because everything else is absolutely monstrous. But again, the Royal Giant. Okay, so the Lava Sparky go... Anyway, the Royal Giant is a big car a key card here. You want to get that card in, focuses on the tower. It's definitely a win condition card, and it's a only six elixir. It's cheaper than most of the rest of your deck, so it's important to get that Royal Giant in. Now, of course, White loses a tower right here, and I always wonder, does the opponent know what's going on? Does the opponent recognize how bizarre these cards are that are coming at him over and over again? Everything costing six, seven, eight elixir at a time. The three musketeers coming down the left-hand side, and they are going to make surprisingly quick work of the Ice Spirit and the Mini P.E.K.K.A., or despite the Ice Spirit, they just wipe out that Mini P.E.K.K.A. A Sparky in behind the three musketeers, and that is a dangerous combination moving in after the King's Tower, and suddenly this battle is going to end quickly when it looked like White was in a lot of trouble. Things have turned around, and now it's just about over. It's just a matter of White putting together one more push to finish off that King's Tower, trying to decide what it's going to be. Lava Hound, Golem, Bowler. Looks like he is going to drop the Golem way in the back, give it a chance to work its way forward, and again, give that Elixir a chance to build back up so that he can stack something up with it. Obviously, a Golem one-track mind kind of card. Here comes the Bowler to help out as well. The Hog Rider, the Miner, being ignored, trying to push forward. The Bowler actually turns around and check it out. Working on the Hog Rider, doing a great job there. The Hog goes down, the Miner is about to follow, and now the push is done. Again, it's the Royal Giant that is the key card in this 7.0 Elixir deck, and White grabs a 3-crown win over a level 9 player. But we are not done there. Here it comes, level 10 versus another level 10 player. So the battlefield relatively even, at least when it comes down to crown towers and troop levels. But check out all of the tiny troops from the opponent. It looks like he's almost running some sort of really, really low elixir deck. And here's White with just about the exact opposite coming from the other side of the battlefield. Now that normally might be a problem for White given that the opponent is going to be able to rotate through so many smaller cards that will chip away at units like Golems, but here comes the three Musketeers and his opponent doesn't have any good counter. He's got a Log and a Zap spell. That does not work out. The Golem is on the tower. The three Musketeers are in behind, blasting away on that tower. And again, doesn't matter whether they're 100% or 1% hit points, they do just as much damage. Everybody getting to the King's Tower. The Musketeers are still up. At least two of them are. The Golemites finally go down. The last of the Musketeers falls, but look at all of that damage on the King's Tower. That is right. That has got to be an emotional moment. Doesn't look good. And White has already begun another push from the back. But this time, instead of just repeating with another Golem and the Three Musketeers, he's going to go with the P.E.K.K.A. and the Sparky. So I love the fact that he's chosen to change the push up, not just rinse and repeat, but of course the weakness of this deck, the air troops, the minions are on the Sparky, on the P.E.K.K.A., but the Royal Giant, once again, the key card gets right in there. And again, that middle deployment, once a tower is down, just makes things so vulnerable to a Royal Giant. He helps finish off the three crown and white grabs the big win versus another level 10 player. And no doubt his opponent walks away saying, man, that was huge. All right, thank you guys, as always, for spending a few minutes of your day with me. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please let me know what else you would like to see from future episodes. Subscribe for Daily Clash content, hit that thumbs up button, and of course, I hope to see every last one of you back here again tomorrow for more Full Attacks.
Sammy Dalton. It's not that huge. I've seen bigger, 